I regret to inform you that we will not be featuring any humour in tonight's play. This is due to budget cuts and the request of some of our viewers who shall remain nameless. However, we will still be featuring the usual misleading information and extreme hackery that you have come to expect from this channel. Please do not enjoy the following. Today we're going to be taking this garbage fender and making it into a good ungarbage fender. Using basic hand tools. Now, if you saw my last videos, we got a little carried away with finishing stuff out. So the point of this is just gonna to be to show you how you can take something like this and make it into a usable part for your car. Because right now it uh, is more or less uh, unusable. I think to begin here, I'm gonna remove this unnecessary appendage and I may also get this brace taken out of here because it's not really serving its intended purpose anymore. Now, before we get too scientific with welding up the crack, we're just gonna rough out some of the damage on this fender and just try to get it back into uh, whatever shape that it's supposed to be. So for that, we're gonna use some pretty primitive and crude techniques. So I'm gonna use a hammer, rubber mallet there, another hammer, and another hammer. Now, oh. You get the idea.
So off camera here, um, I was having trouble getting this back section to kind of stay where I needed it. So I just went ahead and threw a few tacks along this edge here so that we could get this locked back into place. And you always want to start with your edges, then go your body lines, and then high crowns followed by low crowns. And as I said in my dent repair video, uh, sometimes there's occasions where you have to work out multiple areas at once. And our main focus is going to be getting this whole edge back into shape. So we still got a lot of work to do there to get that. Uh, you can see somebody's beating this out with an axe or big hammer at some point in the past. So nothing, nothing's in the right spot here. So we've got to got our work cut out for us there but we'll just spend a little more time on this and then we can get to welding this uh, crack up here try to explain some of what's going on here. Now there's kind of two basic types of hammer and dolly techniques. There's hammer on dolly, which is like that. You can hear kind of that metallic tinging sound. So that's where we're holding the dolly from the back side and we're hitting on that dolly from the front with the hammer. So that is hammer on dolly. Now hammer off dolly is we're holding the dolly underneath the lowest part of the dent and then we're using the hammer and we're hammering around on the high spot that surrounds the dent. And while we're hammering around the high spot, we're pushing up from the bottom with the dolly. So I'll draw a dent on here. This is our dent, so let's imagine that we're just looking at the piece of metal from the side, like this. So you can see, here we have the indentation, and surrounding the dent is a high spot, because as this gets forced down, all this metal has nowhere to go, so it pushes outward and creates a high spot in the surrounding metal. So, if we're doing a hammer off dolly technique, what we'll do is we're going to take our dolly and we're going to apply pressure, and you have to apply a fair amount of pressure with this. So we're going to apply pressure from the bottom with our dolly. And while we're applying pressure, we're going to take our hammer and we're going to tap on these high spots here. And so, Now, what happens is as we're applying this pressure and we're tapping down here, is the rebound action is causing this to come up. And we're basically just forcing all the metal back to where it was originally. That's our hammer off dolly technique. Now when we're doing a hammer on dolly type 
technique. What, what we have is let's pretend we have a crease like this. Again, we're looking at the uh, metal from the side. So this is our crease and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the dolly right underneath here and I'm going to tap right here and because this area is so tight we're just going to keep forcing up with the dolly and again you got to apply a fair amount of pressure from the back side with the dolly but we're going to push that up and we're going to hammer down on this and then as this is being forced up once it gets close you're going to hear this and once you start hearing this that's when you stop so, so every time you hear this that means you're crushing the metal in between the hammer and the dolly and once you crush that metal it has nowhere to go so it's going to start stretching outwards and what you don't want to do is stretch it so we're just trying to get the metal all, all we're ever trying to do when we're hammer and dollying is we're just putting the metal back where it needs to be so now if i have a big dent over a large area you know if i'm hammering if i'm holding the dolly right here and I'm tapping down here, there's such a large area that you know I'm never really going to achieve anything. So if I have a big dent, what I'll do is I'll kind of do an initial rough out and I'll use a rubber or a wooden mallet to basically knock that dent back into shape. Or I'll also take my dolly from the backside and I'll actually use my dolly as a hammer and I'll just basically knock it up from the bottom. So you got to be careful whenever you're going steel on steel that you don't stretch the metal so you know we're trying to be as least aggressive as possible here but again we are straightening a pretty hard piece of metal so sometimes you have to do what you have to do but you know if you're doing this and you're noticing you know you're getting a bunch of jagged stuff like this uh, then you're being too aggressive and you're actually stretching the metal so you know you always want to kind of relieve everything a small amount at a time so this is this is kind of why i like to you know start out with like a rubber or wooden mallet see where that gets me and then from there you know we'll move on to the steel tools so now in the case of this fender what's happened is you get a nice round panel but you know somebody's already beat it out with an axe for us, which really didn't help anything at all. But we've got such a, a lumpy area that we're trying to straighten here. So I'm kind of doing uh, a combination of hammer on dolly and off dolly. And I'm just kind of going, I'm going across, I'm working a large area and I'm just basically hammering as I go and pushing up from the bottom and just trying to rearrange this the best that I can so you know well, once it's at this stage where somebody's already you know made a mess of it we're really probably not going to make it any worse you can just slowly work across it you know we're going to tap down here push up here here we'll kind of tap down like that till we hear a ting sound and we'll just work across and once we kind of get the the shape of it we can kind of do a very light planish, which is a hammer on dolly technique. And we're still going to hear that ting, but it's just going to be very, you know, very light pressure with the dolly, very light pressure with a hammer. And we're just kind of going across like that. And that's just kind of evening out all the metal, you know, without actually hitting it hard enough to stretch it. So. If you're doing uh, like a flat door skin or something, you know, you start hearing this sound, you don't want to stop right away. Again, rounded fenders are pretty forgiving, so you can, you got a little bit more leeway there. Another thing I want to mention here is when we're choosing a dolly for the job, what we want to do is we want to choose a dolly that has slightly more crown than the panel that we're actually working. So now if you look, we're pretending this is our panel from the side here. And you can see that this dolly has more crown. So that's good because then when we're doing our hammer off dolly and our hammer on dolly, we're getting that rebound and this is actually helping to force everything upwards. So if you choose a dolly that's too flat, like let's say we, we use this one, 
So now you can see that's basically the same or even less crown than what we've got. So we start trying to hammer on that. And what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to end up creating a flat spot and we're going to be beating a flat spot into it. So we always want a little bit more crown on our dolly just to help with that rebound action to get the metal back to where it needs to be. So now the other thing here is, uh, say we're doing a flat door skin like this. Well, we're not going to want to use this dolly. Yes, it does have more crown than the panel, but it has too much crown. So as soon as we start trying to hammer on this and bump it up and whatever, we're going to end up creating a huge high spot because this is, there's just too much uh, crown in this dolly. And this panel is so flat that it's just going to want to push it up and then you're going to just end up with a huge mess. So in this case, we're going to use a dolly like this. So still has some crown to it again. We're not going to flip it around because it's flat. This dolly is flat on this side. We try using a flat dolly on this panel. Again, we're just going to create a low spot here. You always want to go with a dolly that's slightly more crown than what you're working, but not too much crown. And definitely you don't want one with less crown. Now, when you're holding a body hammer, you don't want to hold it up here here you're not getting any leverage off of it and there's not really any accuracy what you do whenever you're using a body hammer or really any type of hammer is you hold it back here and then you let the hammer actually do the work you hold it up here and you're just using all all the force from your arm and your wrist to try to, to make that hammer work you find it when you hold the hammer back here much more precision uh, much cleaner results and uh, much much less chance of stretching the metal or damaging it further. So. See, I kind of got this thing roughed in here. Uh, this is starting to line up again. We're still pretty uh, choppy, and then I got got some weird stuff going on through here still. It's still not quite. Uh, still not quite looking the way I want it. There's a bit of a low here, and I think this. This is still kicked out a bit, but the, it's starting to look like a, a fender again, at least. So before I get too carried away with the rest of this, uh, as I'm hammering on it, it's just wanting to flop around. So we're going to just go ahead and get this fully welded up and secured now.
those of you with a keen eye for detail may have noticed that I glazed over the repair of the crack on this fender. If you'd like to see that in detail, please check out my previous video. So now that the crack is repaired, we can uh, go ahead and start fixing all the rest of this damage here. Again, we're not going for perfection on any of this, but we're just trying to make this into a usable fender. So we'll start getting all that stuff smoothed out there. And, uh, hey, get out of here. There's no Bondo jokes in the script this week. Anyway, seeing as how we uh, already covered uh, most of the basics of hammer and dolly, and I hopefully explained that in a way that makes sense, we're going to get back on this and we'll probably just time lapse a lot of this. And then we'll come back if there's anything important that needs to be talked about, which there probably won't be. So we'll just do a quick progress report here and uh, show a couple of things that we've run into. You can see I've kind of been going along and uh, getting things smoothed out here. And I'm basically just using the hammer and dolly. And then because, because this was all this damage somebody had beaten out with uh, an axe it looked like, uh, this is all pretty choppy looking originally. So. What we've been doing is just trying to put all the metal back to where it was uh, for all these little little spots like this i've been using the bullseye pick and then uh, as i bring it up i'm just using a block a flexible block with uh, 80 grit on it to kind of highlight all the highs and lows um, i have been using uh, a vixen file a little bit but we're not going to be going all the way with that on this one and I'll kind of show you why here. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera but if you look here you can see all these scratches here like that and there's gouges like that across basically this whole area of the fender. So what that tells us is that when this fender was fairly new um, it would have been sideswiped and it's already been repaired in the past. Um, so back in the day, uh, what guys would do is they basically rough it out, then use the file to show the highs and lows. And then they'd take a big grinder with 24 grit or 36 grit and they'd run across the whole panel. And uh, basically they could metal finish a dent 
faster than you know you could mix up a batch of bondo so um problem with that is is uh they weren't too concerned with how much metal they were removing at the time because these cars were you know only meant to last 10 years they were never meant to last 80 90 100 years so they didn't care so they just went at it and they also weren't being paid very well so you know not uh knocking the the old school guys at all but this is just the way it was done um you know if they hadn't fixed this fender it wouldn't still be around so but because of that you know we don't know how thin this metal is i can already tell in a few spots it's pretty thin so rather than push our luck with trying to metal finish it we're going to get it close enough to where it would be ready for uh body filler which would be the preferred method i'd rather have body filler on something than thin the metal too much i'm gonna keep going on this i'm gonna get a little bit closer here uh we're gonna iron this out a little more and then i'll uh take my orbital sander here and we'll go over the whole thing give it a quick sand and when uh when we're done we'll come back and we'll have a look at uh where we got so just do a quick overview of the tools we used in this video as well as the crack repair video on this fender got body hammer uh, a couple different selections of dollies rubber mallet a uh, short uh, sanding block with some 80 grit on it uh, this is called a bullseye pick discussed this in some of my previous videos this is really the only uh, specialty tool again these these are fairly reasonably priced i believe uh, we got a cheap uh, orbital sander with uh, I think 80 grit on it uh, I used the Vixen file a little bit in this one but uh, we didn't get too carried away with that so uh, not super necessary but still a, a handy tool to have in your toolbox uh, in the crack repair uh, we used our uh, angle grinder this is a five inch angle grinder I think it's a Makita uh, cheap 90 degree uh, angle grinder with a 3 inch 50 grit grinding disc some clamps the crack repair uh, I'm using a Hobart 140 uh, mig welder with a 023 wire and a uh, argon co2 uh, mig mix for gas so uh, any of you uh, hobbyists uh, looking for a, a good welder to start out with I would uh, definitely endorse uh, these Hobart welders uh, they'll weld anything from super thin like 24 gauge sheet metal all the way up to 3 16 plate so I'm uh, very happy with this this welder well between the uh, crack repair in my last video and all the hammer and dolly work We've got about five hours into this, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But uh, the intent of this was to take an unusable fender and make it into a usable fender using hand tools in a short amount of time. We weren't going for perfection and we didn't get perfection, but that wasn't the point. Um, is this now a usable fender? Uh, well, in my unprofessional opinion, I would say absolutely it is. I'm sure there's some experts that would disagree but uh you know i'd be very happy to bolt this on my car uh you you can't buy these fenders and they're one year only so you know if you if you have parts for your car and they're they're beat up um i always say you're better off trying to fix what you have and even if you fail and you have to you do end up having to buy part at least you learn something by trying so this kind of gives you an idea of what you can achieve so if you were actually using this on a car uh, you'd probably want to get it sandblasted after the kind of initial rough out stage you can see a lot of these dark spots here are just you know pitting and surface rust so it's always a good idea to take care of that before you get too carried away uh, again this I'm just using this for demonstration purposes I don't actually have a car to put this on but uh, you kind of get an idea you know you could keep working this and getting it absolutely perfect but um, the kind of the, the maximum amount of uh, 
filler that uh, you can put on a panel is quarter inch. Um, usually they say eighth inch or less would be ideal. Uh, in this case, you know, we've got our shape back here. We're all pretty close. I would be, I'd say, you know, a sixteenth of an inch would uh, take care of most of this uh, damage, which uh, I think that's totally acceptable. I wouldn't be upset about having a sixteenth inch of filler on, on this fender. Um, again, because we did have previous repairs on this, we didn't want to go, you know, too crazy with it. So there's, there's nothing wrong with using filler. We do have a spot at the bottom here that will need to be replaced, but uh, we'll probably put a patch in like this. So maybe in the future, I'll do a video on MIG welding a patch like this because I'm not using this fender for anything. So we can just keep it around for doing demonstrations. Oh, that was really terrible, wasn't it? If you made it this far, thank you. I'd like to take a moment to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a uh, New Year of happiness and uh, all that stuff. Also wanted to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this uh, really underwhelming uh, production we've got going on here. And uh, thank you to all of you who have also left a nice comment. Uh, I try to reply to as many of them as I can. Uh, some of you guys have really good questions and I try to answer them the best that I can. I suspect this channel has now peaked and uh, it's not going to be seeing much more growth, which is fine with me. Um, if it does grow, I'll have more time to make and uh, upload videos here, but I would like to maintain the same quality of viewers that I have right now. You guys are all awesome. If we get to 1 million subscribers, I will be building a Delahaye in my garage. So look forward to when that never happens. Thanks again for watching. I'll uh, see you on the next one.